what game am I really making? It's a question I've had in my mind for a few weeks now. Since it started as a fun test to just learn how to make a character feel nice, I didn't spend time of figuring out the game's unique selling point or hook. That's okay, sometimes it's special to start with visuals and allow the rest to grow naturally. In this video, I will talk about how I found the identity of my game, my performance thoughts regarding the Switch, and some changes I made to the main character. The original plan was to have a few hub areas like in Spyro, allow the players to explore and get comfortable before jumping into a level. These levels would be linear and inspired in, in structure by Mario 3D World where there's one or two mechanics that are being explored and in the end you would grab an egg and get back to the hub, rinse and repeat. But since I'm making a 3D platformer collect-a-thon, I want to cater to that audience more by having open areas filled with secrets and hidden puzzles so it's fun to explore. So if I would describe the structure of my game by using other games, I'd say that it's like a smaller version of Mario Odyssey where there are multiple mini levels attached to it. The goal is to get a certain amount of eggs in an area and then move on. It's a simple explanation, but so far this feels good to me. I have a question for you. Do you like to unlock abilities as you go through the game or have them all unlocked in the beginning? Please comment down below because I will read everything. Thank you. Some of you have seen the big rotating cube. This approach was easy when it was single levels that you loaded in, but now when it's a big open areas, I plan to have small holes in the walls somewhere where you can like send in the small chicken. Then you'll find some jump pads that send you flying to these rotating levels. I think it's gonna look cute. This also leads me to a new thing I tried that actually took a while to get right. Having the smaller character always with you, I'm taking big inspiration from how Banjo-Kazooie did it where Kazooie appears out of the bag for certain moves and animations. Now I got it working myself and I'm actually very happy with it. I think it can be cute to show the friendship between these two characters. I had the Nintendo Switch performance in mind when I wanted to go in the direction of a hub and smaller levels. That way, I wouldn't have to do too much hands-on and optimizing when making it run well on Nintendo Switch. But when taking a step back and thinking about what kind of adventure I really wanted to make, I knew I had to try this other direction. I may have a solution to the performance. In theory, it should work, but I'll cross a bridge when I get there. But the plan is to have open areas and then some sort of tunnel leading to the level, the smaller sections. During this tunnel, I'll load and unload what I need. These tunnels can look in different ways, like a narrow path between two cliff sides, an elevator, or door that shuts behind you. As long as I can hide the load and unload areas, we're good. So, <clears throat> exciting stuff is happening, I can tell you that. Uh, I'm getting very close to having a proper announcement for the chicken game, you know, Steam page or trailer or both. Uh, and yes, or sorry, I mean, uh, it's not called the chicken game. It's got a real name that I've been like holding on for like two years. Don't spoil it if you know, please. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Also, <laughs> in July, I am going to move away from the city. I am going to be making video games in the woods that's right we're moving into a house in the woods it's i've been daydreaming about this for like three years so it's surreal that it's happening so you don't want to miss that subscribe don't hit the bell notification unless you want to uh but stay tuned for what's to come i'm very excited about this and i'll see you next time